What's up, fellas? I just had a freaking nightmare. Just woke up. It's 11.30. April 3rd. And um, it was about my mom. She was laying in bed on fire, and her whole side of her face was on fire. And she wouldn't wake up because she was drunk or on drugs or something. And I was trying to lift her up with one hand. I was punching the person next to her in the bed going, you fucking heroin junkie, it's your, your fault. She was dating this dude for the last... 15 years of her life, maybe 20 years since I was a teenager. Um, and uh, he was a, a heroin addict. And I don't know if she ever got messed up on that stuff, but what happened is one night she went out she, after they had broken up and she was drinking a lot. She drank Heineken's. She was like 62. She, I'm 50 and be 59 next week. And she was drinking Heineken's and smoking weed a lot. And I don't know what else she was taking, but somehow she ended up driving around at one o'clock in the morning and got out of the car and slipped on the ice and fell and sat there and froze until all 10 of her fingers were frostbitten and we got called to the hospital the next day and over the course of the next week her fingers turned black i don't know if you've ever seen frostbite and they started falling off like so like the start she reached in her purse and like the tip of her finger would fall off they ended up amputating all of her fingers and she had just like two stumps of thumbs left. That's where you're gonna end up if you drink or do drugs. And that's why I quit August 26, 1991 is the last time I've had any alcohol or cocaine or um, in December 91 is the last time I smoked any weed. And that's why I live a life where I'm kind of like a health nut is I don't wanna end up like my parents. But the dream about my mom was vivid and it was, she was on fire and freezing is kind of like being on fire a frostbite and I think that's where that came from in my anger at her ex-boyfriend for wasn't really his fault she, she got involved with him but um he was he was a junkie and a bum he's a good dude actually uh I know it sounds weird to say but he had a good heart but he was a fucking addict and uh that's why I have zero tolerance for alcoholism or drug addiction in my life and I I I, I spent my life you know I'm in the gym five days a week I'm gonna be I'm gonna be gonna be uh 59 April 16th man and, you know I'm in good shape for an old dude because I'm in the gym all the fucking time and I have been for 30 years since I right out of rehab I started training four or five days a week since 91 that's why I'm in good shape and Christy takes super good care of me and pre-cooks all my meals I eat healthy and I quit smoking cigars April 16th last year because I said I don't want to it was a direction I only been smoking recreationally for a couple of years cigars but it was starting to become an addiction and uh um so i gave that up cold turkey on my birthday coming up on a year so i am a stone cold sober and have been for my entire adult life since i was 26 years old never once have i been blackout drunk or under the influence of anything so um it's a bit the cornerstone of my success and i tell you guys don't drink don't do drugs life is short my dad died at 59. That's that's why this birthday coming up is so important to me. Is I don't want my kids to ever see me like I saw my dad. He used to have grand mal seizures because he drank so much vodka. He had the front part of his brain was was damaged from alcoholism, and uh, he'd have seizures like stand up real quick, and then um, like his eyes would roll in the back of his head. He'd fall. He's six foot two. He's a big dude. He'd fall right on his face, man, and flop around like all stiff and shit fucking freaked me out as a kid to see that shit don't ever do that to your kids man if you're if you're messed up on alcohol or drugs get some help go go, go to my kids have never ever seen me drink or do drugs um don't do that to your kids man and if you're in a, if you're in a bad spot with that shit you can get help you can go to aa or na i've seen countless people because i was in the rooms i went to, I, I haven't been in the meetings in a long time but i used to go a lot. I did my 90, 90s and everything else. I was got involved with a motorcycle club, a one percenter club called the Fifth Chapter. It was all recovering alcoholics and addicts, and I hung out with those dudes for five years. And you know, people that were on a positive path of staying sober and revolved their life around motorcycling, and that's what it evolved to. My entire life it revolves around motorcycling, and uh, my whole family's involved with the business, and we have a lot of fun doing it. But um, it doesn't have to end jail, death, or institutions. And that's where you're going if you're drinking, man. And you're going to hurt people around you that love you, 
we're going to wake up and have fucking nightmares 30 years later, 20 years later about the shit you did. Don't be such a selfish fucking prick, man. Um, get your shit together. Take care of yourself. And that means if you're super fat and, and out of shape, get, get off the goddamn couch and walk, start walking a couple miles a day. You know, excuses are like a-holes. Everybody has one. And, uh, you know, they're no fucking good, man. So take care of yourself. If you have people around you that love you and count on you, like like I do with my family, be that man. Be the rock of Gibraltar that they need so they don't wake up having nightmares 20 years later like I just did, man. So I risk ridicule or persecution or whatever you want to call it for burying my soul to you guys. Um on such a large platform here, but I'm doing it because I know there's someone out there who's going to hear this and has either been through the same shit I've been through with, with alcoholism and drug addiction in my family and my personal life. Um, and there's hope. There's always hope. If you have faith, um, never have I seen a person fail who thoroughly follows the right path. And uh, those that do fail are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves they think there's not a problem everybody around them knows there's a problem I have friends in my family uh, I get calls like because everybody knows I'm sober and I got my shit together and I can help people and, and, and they're like give them a call give them a call give them a call and oh there's nothing wrong everybody's exaggerating yeah yeah everybody, everybody's exaggerating it's bullshit you're not even being honest with yourself you got a freaking problem man you need to get some help Get the help you need and stop leaving a wake of wreckage around you everywhere you go. Don't be a selfish prick. It was a bizarre dream I had. It was so vivid, you know, seeing your mom in bed on a fire and not waking up because she's on something, you know. And that's kind of what happened to her, except for it was ice that got her. You know, she was never the same. She went downhill so quick. When she, she was a beautiful woman at one point. Um, Irish, English, red hair, blue eyes, beautiful woman. Just like, uh, you know, all our granddaughters. I mean, look, look, look at my daughters and look at my brother's daughters. I mean, beautiful women in our family. But it doesn't end up beautiful if you're, if you're drinking and drugging. It's a slippery slope, man. Drinking and drugging and smoking, it ends up in jail, death, and institutions. If you're lucky, jail and institutions. Um, what a shitty way to die and what a freaking horrible legacy to, to, to leave behind a waste of a life. One of my heroes, Steve McKinney, used to, used to say, don't drink, don't do drugs, kids, and uh, stay in school. He used to he's always try to be a positive message, and he's gone. So, if I can help just one of you guys by shedding some light on the subject, then this will have been worth it. To think with as much life that I have inside of me that... that I'd be dead in two weeks because of alcohol and drug addiction. Like my dad was at 59, I'm gonna be 59. That's why this, this year is so important to me. I wanted to be the total opposite of what happened to him. Sometimes we learn more from people who do shit the wrong way than we ones that do, do things the right way. And my goal was to be in like the best shape of my life at 59. And I think working too many hours gets in the way a little bit, but for my age, I'm in pretty damn good shape. And, uh, you know, I go to the gym, I do four sets of 15 pull-ups every time I go to the gym, four or five days a week. So I do 60 pull-ups. I do two sets of 50 push-ups. It's 100 push-ups. I do two sets of 50 sit-ups. That's 100 sit-ups. And I do 100 squats, two sets of 50. And I do 60 tricep dips. I'm 220 pounds. So doing 60 pull-ups at 220 and 60 tri-dips and all those body weight exercises and 100 second of planks that's my warm-up and then i'll then i'll go do chest and try on monday and back and by on tuesday and shoulders and calves on wednesday and legs on th i haven't been doing legs because i freaking i had to get x-rays man i don't talk about my personal sh injuries and shit because it doesn't really i i, I thought i broke my leg uh, a couple weeks ago uh, on the way back from daytona when i was at a pick i Got stuck in between a couple of motorcycles. My leg blew up like a balloon. And I went and got x-rays. I thought it was broken. But um, I haven't, so I haven't done legs in a couple weeks. But uh, skip, skipping leg day. So, because um, I thought I broke my freaking leg. And it, it hurts like a bastard. And it's all swelled up. 
but it's not broken. But I, I, I do this routine for the last 30 years, and um, it pays huge dividends in, in, in many, many ways. The direct opposite of drinking and drugging is, is taking care of yourself, and the results, you know, when you use alcohol or drugs or eat too much food, you feel good for a minute, but you feel shitty afterwards. When you're in the gym, it hurts, or when you're running, it hurts, or when you're doing a, you know, physical training, it might hurt, but afterwards you feel better every single time you leave the gym full of endorphins and adrenaline and you, you feel better you look better you are better and it, and it that type of hard work first thing a day i always go i always go before work first thing um sets a tone for the day for you and uh makes everything easier my sidekick phineas finn so alcoholism and drug it he's been creeping around all well the whole time I'm shooting this and knocking stuff off my desk but the um alcohol and drug addiction and overeating and other messed up habits like that are not from God. They're, they're, if you believe in God, then you then you would know there's a Satan too and he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's how he does it. He'll rob you of your life and rob you of everything that's good in your life and leave you spiritually and morally bankrupt, which is way worse than any financial bankruptcy ever could be. Trust me, because there are millionaires that are spiritually bankrupt that die horrible deaths from alcohol and drugs the opposite of that is faith and my favorite bible verse is romans 8 28 god works all things for good for those that are living according to his will so this tragedy of my mom falling on the ice and losing all her fingers because she was under the influence of something late at night she shouldn't even have been out 62 years old and drinking and all that that tragedy the tragedy of my dad dying of alcoholism. When he relapsed after being sober a short time, his liver was shot. The doctor said he'd have two weeks to live if he start drink, started drinking again. And I went over to see him and said, Pops, what are you doing? You know, the doctor said you can't drink no more. And he said, it's your son. It's your turn to carry on, son. Um, my time's over, blah, blah, blah. I said, where do you want to be buried, Dad? Because the, 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 the club I was in, my brother's in the club. I said, well, what can I do? I said, there's nothing. They said, nothing you can do. It's just tough love. Just ask him where he wants to be buried. So I said, where do you want to be buried, Dad? And he said, in, in, uh, just roll me in a ditch and light me on fire. Burn me in the ground. So he ended up decomposing in his apartment for days until it stunk so bad that the neighbors smelt his body. And we got the call from the police. And we walk, I walked in. I saw him there laying on the couch. And they wouldn't let us in. But I saw his body there. And I have vivid memories of that. And it was a disaster, man. His couch was like, he had like decayed into the couch and we had to throw the couch off the porch. There were maggots in the couch. There was a gun there that, I don't know what the gun was there for, but he was going to shoot himself if he didn't die. I don't know. But the ashtray was overflowed, like a pile of cigarettes, vodka bottles everywhere. The bathroom, I won't even get into that. These are probably two gory details already, but my brother and I threw the couch off the porch. And my brother's dying of alcoholism right now. He's definitely on the same path my dad was on. He showed up at the shop two months ago, shaking like a leaf. And after, well, I actually, I brought him to the hospital to try to get him some rehab. I don't want to talk about that but, um, right now, but this is enough for one night. You guys get the point, man. Look at where, way, where my life is. Look at, where, look at what I've accomplished in the relationship I have with my kids. It's phenomenal. My daughter Taylor is a, um, she's actually the uh, social social media manager for HRC. She runs her Instagram and TikTok, and they fly her all over the world. And she was doing the same thing for Parts Unlimited. Um, she gets to go to all the big motorcycle rallies, and the guy she's dating is 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 in the industry. Awesome dude, and um, she's having a great life. And my my youngest daughter Dor Jordan's working with us. At the shop, Junior, of course, is with us. Christy's with us. The whole family's together in the industry that they love, I think, in, 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 a, in large part due to me having some, some uh, clarity in my thinking for the last 30 years and, and leading by example down a good path. Proud of my kids. They're all doing awesome. None of them have hang-ups with the alcohol and drugs. And they're, they're on the right path.
no matter how far down the wrong path you've gone, there, there's hope. I've seen people, I've helped a lot of people get sober over the years, and um, they call me, ones that was the few that were successful, because Todd's are not that good for recovery from alcohol and, and, and drug addiction. It's like three out of 100 ever really stay on the right path. But the ones that thoroughly follow the right path, they all make it. The ones that don't end up in one of those three places. Anyways, if no one had told, told you guys, say I love you all. I'm going to try to get back to sleep because I had a big day tomorrow. We were extremely busy. A lot, of, a lot of great stuff going on with the business, which wouldn't exist if I was on the wrong path. I love you all. And God bless America.